Welcome back to the RifeWave Audio Community, where we explore together all types of home audio systems from hi-fi to home theater. My name is John, and for this video, we continue our series on AV processors and receivers as a buyer's guide to what is available in 2020. Our third video in this series is subtitled Part 3, 7 with 13 channels, and complements Parts 1 and 2, where we explored 15... 16 and 15 channel processor models. If you missed parts 1 and 2 of the AV Processor Receiver Buyer's Guide 2020 series, as well as the supplement to part 2 to include the latest 110 anniversary model from Denon, the AVR A110, I have provided the links for your convenience in the description. This series is grouped by channel count as Determining your channel count is usually the first decision you need to make as you are starting your AV processor search. All of the fe other features, room correction, streaming support, number of inputs, etc. won't matter if the processor falls short on its ability to support the desired speaker count. We include list prices so you can determine if the desired channel count is aligned with your budget. With 13 channels of processing, the most commonly recommended immersive configuration is 7.1.4. This configuration includes a 7-channel base or ear level layer, a 2 independently controllable uh, subwoofer output, and 4 height or ceiling channels. Now you may be asking why RipeWave Audio jumped from 15 channels to 13 channels in this series. That is because we did not find any 14-channel models on the market today. In preparing this model overview, it appeared at first that there would be a very large grouping at 13 channels, with so many models advertised as supporting 11.2. While all the models where 0.2 was claimed, did have two subwoofer connections on the back of the unit. Most of those we found were wired in parallel internally without the capability to independently control. Now as RipeWave Audio only counts independently controllable channels, many of the units sold as dot two are represented as dot one in this series. Therefore, 11.1 models will be covered in the next video in the series, part 4, 14, with 12 channels. If you have a dot one AV processor, you can still adjust volume levels at each subwoofer in a multi-sub configuration. However, you won't have control through the room correction software. If you have a dot two, AV processor and your room correction software supports independent multi-subs, fine-tuning your setup uh, should be much easier. To determine if a unit was truly DOT2, it was necessary in many cases to study its manual for an indication of independent subwoofer control. Now, oddly, some companies don't highlight this capability even if they have it. Typically, we found this in the room correction section of the manual, but for the Onkyo model, model, we found the evidence within the description of its rear panel. The key language being, you can set the volume of the two powered subwoofers to different levels where we only saw details for a single subwoofer setting, we had to assume the dual outputs were wired in parallel, and therefore we are listing those as dot one processors. Whether you opt for a seven or a nine channel base layer, both 13 and 15 channel processors can accommodate. However, you will lose two channels in the upper layers in doing so. A layer with front wides moves from 9.2.4 to 
to 9.2.2. And the more typical 7-channel base configuration goes from 7.2.6 to 7.2.4. As the 7.2.4 configuration is most commonly recommended, uh, the 13-channel model should be sufficient for many, but does not leave room for expansion should this guidance change. With the seven 13-channel models, in this review, we see a more compact price range. After a focused study on this channel count, it is necessary to revise the cost of entry table one more time. Six channels are still at $200, eight at $350, 10 channels at $1,100, 13 at $1,200, 15 at $2,500, and 16 at uh, close to $3,000. Four models were actually priced under $2,000. The Denon AVR X3700H sets the cost of entry now for 13 channel models at $1,199. We will now explore the full field of 13 channel processors. As with the first two videos in this series, we won't get into the full details of these products with this first pass. The 13-channel product grouping is populated with mainstream brands. We see the first appearance of Onkyo and Yamaha, as well as entries from Marantz and Denon. Dominated by amplified, amplified AV receivers in this category, only one model of the seven is an AV processor separate, and the only one with balanced XLR pre-amplifier outputs. Once again, we will explore these from highest to lowest cost, and this time the list begins with Onkyo. Onkyo PR-RZ3100. The name of the Japanese home cinema and audio equipment manufacturer Onkyo translates as sound resonance. Its history dates back to 1946 and includes the Integra and Integra Research Divisions. Onkyo purchased Pioneer's Home Electronics Corporation in 2015. With ongoing financial trouble, the future of Onkyo brand is uncertain. In 2019, Sound United considered purchasing, which may have provided relief, but that agreement was terminated. The PRRZ3100 is the Onkyo flagship model and tops the list of 13 channel models at $3,399. Introduced in 2016, the PRRZ3100 only checks the Dolby Atmos and DTS-X format boxes. Onkyo has their own room correction uh, software, which they call AccuEQ and is available on this model. Yamaha Avantage A5200. Yamaha Corporation is likely the most commercially diverse company we will examine products for in this series. Founded initially as Nippon Gappi Company Limited in 1887, its heritage is rooted in the production of pianos and reed organs. While their portfolio now includes motorcycles and outboard motors, Yamaha is the largest producers of musical instruments in the world and has sold audio equipment since 1922. The A5200 is part of Yamaha's Avantage brand, which aims to bring studio-grade sound and sophisticated video enhancement to the home. Like the Onkyo PR-RZ3100, the Yamaha A5200 supports Dolby Atmos and DTS-X. As the A5200 is a 2019 model, it is surprising that they have not included more support for immersive formats. But this unit does have the most popular ones covered. As alluded to earlier, this unit is the only one that is an AV processor separate so you will need external amplification. 
balanced XLR outputs for the 13 channels are provided for quiet delivery to those amplifiers. Yamaha also has its own solution for room correction, which they call Wipow. Denon AVR-X6500H Denon joins the 13-channel group with three entries. Leading those is the Denon AVR-X6500H, which sells for $2,199. As this is the oldest of the three, launched in 2018, it would not be surprising if they came out with a new model. As such, this model does not have AK support. However, it is the first unit we have seen with support for Odyssey's DSX, which creates additional channels for front wide and front heights from 7.1 sources. Atmos, Oral 3D, DTSX, and IMAX Enhance are also supported. Denon AVR-X4700H The AVR-X4700H is one of Denon's 2020 models. As such, it has support for AK and EARC. The X4700H also supports the same surround formats which the X6500H has, but the X4700H also supports DTSX Pro. As the first unit in this series selling under $2,000 at $1,699 appears to be attractive compared to the AVR X6500H, which is $500 more expensive, lacking newer features and older. The AVR X4700H I.O. count only drops by one analog stereo input, so perhaps there are details under the hood that justify the cost difference. Onkyo TX-RZ920 The Onkyo TX-RZ920, launched in 27, is a year newer than Onkyo's flagship, the TX-RZ3100. With the TX-RZ920, the 5.1 analog inputs are removed, which could be an issue if you want to have an analog outputting multi-channel source. Removed also is component video output seen in the flagship model. Selling for $1,699, the TX-RZ920 supports the same AccuArc EQ room correction along with the Dolby Atmos and DTS-X formats. Marantz SR6015 The SR6015 is another new model launched by Marantz this year. This model is positioned as their 13-channel entry below the 15-channel SR8015 and priced considerably less at $1,599. The 11 powered channels are too less as well and deliver less power overall, which could help explain why this unit is half the cost. Also, there are a few less inputs. As with the SR8015, this unit has Atmos, Oral 3D, DTSX Pro, and IMAX enhanced capabilities, along with the Odyssey Multi-X XT32 room correction. The Denon AVR-X3700H. Closing a channel count category once again is Denon with the AVR-X3700H. As mentioned earlier, this unit sets the entry point for 13 channel processors at $1,199. Launched in 2020 with the next model up, the AVR-X4700H, this unit has support for 8K and EARC. What is dropped is support for DTSX Pro, present in the model above. Also loss is an output zone, but otherwise very similar for $400 less. So there you have it, seven processors available today with 13 outputs. In this grouping, we did not see any of the upmarket brands such as Macintosh, NAD, and Arcam, but they will make a return with the 12-channel overview. Cinema at home brands such as Datasat, 
don't have offerings below 15 channels. The 13 channel mark is a good place for those to stop if you don't anticipate expanding beyond 7.2.4 or 9.2.2 configurations. A 12 channel limit may also be acceptable if you are willing to sacrifice independent subwoofer control from the processor. With only the Yamaha Avantage A5200 sporting balance XLR outputs, the 13 channel group is certainly centered around receivers and use of external amplifiers that do not support balanced connections. Marantz and Denon continue to offer the most comprehensive support for immersive formats, while RipeWave Audio will explore room correction solutions in a future video. The proprietary solutions from Onkyo and Yamaha, AccuEQ and Waipau have not received positive reviews overall. To implement room correction properly, a lot of technical research is required to get it right. Unless a vendor is willing to invest strongly in a solution internally, as with Trinoff, they may be better to partner with a third party that is giving room correction the proper attention and not just checking the box to compete. I have heard reports of room correction solutions making the system actually sound worse than before they ran it. The differences between these 13 channel products should become more clear once RipeWave Audio performs a deeper inspection. If you also own a 13 channel processor receiver, I would be interested in hearing your feedback please include in the comments section. Do you feel that 13 channels are sufficient? Or do you need, feel the need for more channels? That feedback would be useful to the RipeWave Audio community. Furthermore, if you enjoyed this video and are interested in enhancing your audio experience, please like and subscribe to this RipeWave Audio community and be sure to select the bell icon so you will be notified as soon as the next video is posted. Until then, keep evolving your audio experience.